Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an interesting logarithmic equation with complex and imaginary numbers. We have ln, the natural log of z, which is a complex number, equaling negative 1 to the power i. So we have a really interesting scenario here because we have a negative base and an imaginary exponent which makes it real crazy. So if we had i to the power negative 1, that would be pretty easy to figure out, don't you think? That would just be 1 over i, and we can evaluate it. But what about negative 1 raised to i? Well, one thing we know from real numbers, if you raise negative 1 to an even integer power, you get positive 1, or if you raise it to an odd power, you get negative 1. And if you raise it to the power 0, that's even, so you still get 1, right? So that covers all the cases for reals. But this is not the real world. This is an imaginary world, right? So anything is possible. Let's go ahead and explore what happens in this case. And I know there is a really quick, cheap solution, which I'm going to show you. But obviously, that does not count. But I'm still going to show you. Since we have L and Z, and we know that Z is the same as E to the L and Z, right? Even in the complex world. We can go ahead and do the following then, right? e to the power l and z from here is going to be e to the power negative 1 to the power i. So z is equal to that. The million dollar question is though, what is negative 1 to the power i? How do you evaluate this? So this question could have been phrased a little differently. I think, and it was phrased differently. I just wanted to change it up a little bit. Originally, it would be something like, okay, can you evaluate negative 1 to the power i? But that, be, that would not be very interesting, right? That's why I wanted to spice it up a little bit by including the natural log. So let's see how we can proceed with a problem like this. I have the log of a complex number. What is the log of a complex number? If z can be written as a plus bi, which is the name of this channel, right? Then ln of z is just going to be ln of a plus bi. But what does ln a plus bi mean, right? I mean, what is that supposed to mean? Is that clear as is? No, not really. So we need to kind of think about the polar form, which is r times e to the power i theta. r is called the modulus or the absolute value of z, which is given by the absolute value of z. And theta is called the argument. In most cases, we use the principal argument, especially if you want to get a single value, then we go with the principal branch, right? Great. So... Do we know what z is though? We don't. So, but let's just quickly define what ln z from here is going to be. It's going to be ln r, the natural log of the modulus, plus i times theta. Okay? So that will be the natural log of z. So you can go ahead and replace z with that. Is that going to help you? Uh, not really. I mean, you can try. ln r plus i theta equals negative 1 to the power i. So here's the problem. We were able to express the left-hand side as a complex number in standard form, like a plus bi form, but the right-hand side is not in that form. Make sense? So we kind of have to turn it to that form or some other form, whatever. So let's work with negative 1 to the power i. In order to be able to do that, we're going to write negative 1 as a complex number. In other words, we're going to complexify negative 1. To complexify negative 1, we're going to consider what's called the argand plane. And on the argon plane, we have a real axis and an imaginary axis. And numbers can be expressed like vectors or points on the coordinate system. Negative 1 would be corresponding to negative 1 plus 0i. In other words, its imaginary part is 0 because it is real. So it would appear here, which is basically one unit away from 0. And we can kind of, like I said earlier, we can turn this into a vector. And then consider the angle it makes with the positive real axis, which is called its argument. In this case, theta would be pi radians or 180 degrees. Make sense? So anytime you see a negative number, like negative 1, negative 5, negative real number, it, the argument or the principal argument is always pi radians. Make sense? So you kind of memorize it so you don't have to do the argon plane every time. Great, so let's go ahead and do this then. Uh, and r is basically 1 because it's distance from 0, obviously, right? The absolute value of negative 1. So we're going to write it as just this, 
e to the i theta, and theta is pi, so it's going to be e to the power i times pi. But wait a minute. We can add multiples of 2 pi to this, right? So in general form, I'm going to add 2 pi n, where n is an integer. But if you consider n equals 0, you get the principal value, which is usually the single valued expression if we are looking for a single value. Make sense? Most of the time we are, because if you're trying to solve an equation, you would want to stick to a single value. Great, so what does this give us? Well, we kind of got, uh, you know, ln r plus something on the left-hand side, and we got e to the power, you know, something else on the right-hand side. But how are these equal? So here's a good question. We can go ahead and set ln r plus i theta equal to this, and for simplicity's, simplicity's sake, it's kind of hard to say, can I just stick to i pi? It doesn't matter. You can always plug it back in wherever you see the pi, replace with pi plus 2 pi n, and then it's going to work. So can I turn this into standard form? And yes, Euler's formula allows us to do that, thanks to Euler, because he's a great mathematician, maybe the greatest. I think he's the greatest. Anyways, we can write this as cosine pi plus i sine pi. And set it equal to ln r plus i theta. Remember, our goal is to solve for z, so we need to find r and theta. Wait a minute. Didn't we find theta from here? Or did we? <laughs> Let's find out. By setting the imaginary parts and real parts equal to each other separately, we find that ln r is the same as cosine pi, which is, by the way, negative 1. Is that helpful? <laughs> and then... Um, sine theta is equal to sine pi is equal to theta by the way sine pi is zero so theta is zero wait is that right well wasn't it pi well it was for the right hand side not the left hand side so it's a little different here but anyways from here hopefully you can set up a system of equations and solve for r and theta and then find z because z is supposed to be e to the power i theta but we do know that r is equal to 1, right? Fix it. Oh, yes. This is just for negative 1. Oh, I forgot to raise it to the power i. That explains everything. So let me go ahead and erase this real quick, and then we'll fix it right away. So here's what, what happens. Sorry about the confusion. Uh, and I kept forgetting the i here. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as i pi to keep it simple. This is equal to ln z. So now ln z becomes e to the power i squared pi, but i squared is negative 1, so it's going to be e to the power negative pi. And now we're going to do e to the power both sides, so z is going to be e to the power, e to the power, negative pi. And this brings us to the end of this video, really. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.